But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais. Quand toutes les chances sont contre toi. When you can't push one more second. Chase the glory. Viseo. Sports on CBC, presented by the Championnat du Sport à Radio Canada, une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the government of Canada, Nike, just do it, Fettner, Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program, Pierre Partenaire des Prix de l'Entraîneur de l'Année U Sport, Vera Burn, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979, Partenaire du Sport Universitaire depuis 1979, Vera Exclusive supplier of U-Sports championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusif des bagues des championnats U-Sport. Wilson, le ballon officiel de U-Sport. Official U-Sports basketball. Et par Green Shield Canada. Pierre yeah, partenaire en titre. Le 8 ultime Green Shield U-Sport 2024. And by Green Shield Canada. Proud title partner of the 2024 Green Shield U-Sports Final 8. Welcome back, and here is the final game, the 2024 U-Sports Men's Final Eight, Queens, Laval, in Laval's backyard. Greg Campbell, Mo Khan here on this Sunday night. Greg, let's dive into it here. Queens, probably the heavy favorites, but Laval's been the sweetheart so far in this tournament. I mean, they've been no Cinderella. They've knocked off two conference champions, first the number one overall seed in the Victoria Vikes, and a lethal scorer in Diego Mafia. Semi-final, they get rid of Malcolm Christie and the AUS champs of the Dalhousie Tigers. Now they're going to be asked to do it a third and a fourth time in a pair of brothers and Luca and Cole Sillis who combined for 45 in their semi-final win. They like to play downhill, they like to play fast, but the Queens wants to walk away golden with their first national title. The flip side, the post game. It's a throwback between Diff and Halizovic. I mean, they've got size on the inside. They won the fourth quarter by 15 yesterday and the rebounding battle by 15. There are a lot to deal with in the paint. Well, for Laval, if they do beat Queens, they've taken out the Can West champions, the AUS champions, and the OUA champions. But we do know one thing, though, they'll be a first-time champion. Laval and Queens coming up next here on CBC Sports. Feel every hit, point, and celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline. Our passionate team unlocks a world of possibilities with digital broadcasting made simple, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. Proudly Canadian, ISI Live, be there. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visit the shop.usports.ca to profit of the promotion of the semaine de la collection Nike Team. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories, 
CBC Sports, just because they love it. Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. Welcome back. We're down to one, one game. First time champions, will it be Queens or Laval? Queens have done it not the easiest way. The one at the death against Brock and the OUA champions. Chip game. They had a thriller against Winnipeg in which the Westmen were shot away from perhaps pulling off the biggest win over Queens. And then Queens took out their provincial rival, Ottawa Gigi's. And now here they are, a chance, as perhaps now viewed as the villains against the upstart Laval Rougiore, who have the home crowd. And you have to wonder here, Greg, can Laval cash in for the third time with the pro Laval crowd against Queens. Well, and they had that break having lost in the semifinals, and you hear the noise in this building even before tip-off. And that's going to be a huge factor. It rattled the Vikes early. They lost 21-11 in that first quarter. And then the same thing with Dalhousie in that fourth quarter yesterday. Let's go to Mark, Mark Antoine Garapie. Le numéro 9, number 9, Aaron Tennant. Et le numéro 12, Fofo Adetogin. L'entraîneur-chef des Gills, the head coach, Steph Barry. Et maintenant, veuillez accueillir l'alignement départ du Rouge Le numéro 5, Steve Joseph. Le numéro 6, c'est Sidney Tremblay-Lacombe. Le numéro 11, Ismaël Diouf. Le numéro 12, Willem Mwanza. Et le numéro 13, Aris Elizabeth. The starting five complete, Queens, Laval about to get this game Mark underway Collier. here from St. Paul, Quebec. It is a game that has been accepted to the rule. You don't know who's going to win until the final buzzer hits. And now we have the number eight seed against the number two seed. And for Queens, the history with this school against Laval, for those who follow other U sports out there, Queens beat Laval in the football semifinals way back in 2009 and they won their Vanny Cup on the football field next door to us right now and here is Laval that will begin the party Steve Joseph ice veins in the last two games with clutch free throws Ismail Duf MVP leg and a dead again with the first turnover going to favor Queen they go the high low right off the bat still is and right there, they open up the account. Tennant coming in, scoring about five and a half a game from London, Ontario. And Tennant is going to be one of these guys, a Western alumni or Mustang transfer, be it that. And his length at the rim is going to be a big part of how this story goes in the first half. So Queens fight, strikes first. Joseph against Tennant. Jab step, looking, pivoting, jumper, off the heel, rebound, right back to Queens. They're one and done for Laval on that play. And a size difference right away. Look at the stretch out line. Silas! Absolutely pulverizing on that play. And you don't if you're not ready for this team to be ready to run downhill Then you're gonna be behind in a hurry Laval scoring about 72 points a game Queens 87 points a game and right now they've put a library effort of sound against the Laval faithful Joseph Mopoli touches Elizabeth opens up his account and the left pocket for him He comes up big on that shot and you see again look at the pace here but the 20 and 13 in yesterday's semifinal win. A dead again. Rebound. New 14 for the Gales. And now they start up again. Lucas Tillis, the teardrop. 
And the rebound for Elizabeth, and he might be the one that can get the rebounding margin in favor of Laval today. Well, Lucas sat out the first game due to a double tech in the Ontario Championships, but he had 20 and 7 in his return. Doof. Elizabeth from the center arc. Missing the three. Rebound to Silas, and here he comes. He hits about six rebounds a game, Lucas Silas. A dead again, a running back out there from the center arc. And that was not executed properly. The idea was right, but the conclusion was wrong. A uh, three-point shot, something they thrive on, 37%. Yesterday, 7 of 19 from the field, and then during the regular season, in the upper third in the OUA, 9 makes a game that's good for fifth at sixth in terms of percentage at 33. Joseph, Duke in traffic, and one. For Laval, Ismail Duke has emerged as a star in this tournament partner to finish your sentence there. I mean, thank you very much. 19 and 11 yesterday, three blocks, and there were a number of times where if you put that ball in the pocket corner, he's got the length, the size, and the speed to close out in a hurry. You can see right now there's no fear or intimidation from Queens or Laval in the first two minutes of play. It is a 5-4 lead for the Rougier. And Dill can handle the ball too. Trailing tenant point number four, and they're back up 6-5. Oh, he had a great first game in the quarterfinals and then quiet in the semifinals, but again, just a difference maker in terms of his length on both ends of the court and his ability to switch off high and low. Malanza, Connor Kelly, a former Bishop Gator, knows this Laval Rougier team very well well and he was able to create a foul on Mwanza and that will be the first team foul on Laval in this game and it's a push off on the turnaround there in terms of the crossover and talking to the officiating crew as you'll see a side out based on where the foul occurred there talking to the officiating crew before the game I said anything different that you guys are looking for their tournament and they said well it's a championship game we're gonna let him play but keep it under control Tenet with the pirouette and he's on six points already he scored six of eight of the Queens Gales attack I mean he averages five and a half a game but he's a 48 percent shooter he's high volume inside the paint with high percentages there. Yeah, 15 against Western during the regular season doof back out it comes the Rizal had a master class game against Dow the jumper too strong and that goes out of play, and it will be Queen's possession, and now they'll have a conversation about that. And they are going to reverse course and go back to Laval. Six left in the shot clock, 7.13 left on the game clock. Well, they're going to get the hometown call here and there, but the key of this game is are they going to be able to consistently box out Elizabeth and do it for four quarters? And right there, Sils is able to box that pass. Elizabeth from way downtown. Missing that, rebounded by the Gales, and here they come the other way. They hit about 43 rebounds per game this season. Drop pass, a dead again, inside the lane. An easy floater does not go in. It's still an 8-5 lead for the Gales. Well, they baited him, and he took it on that play, and now they come out running, guiding the other way. And Elizabeth, and a stampede. This remains Laval ball. That's a great no call there, and Cole Sillis who isn't talked about a lot. You see how active his hands are there. Sizes it up, up perfectly. Watch the flash into the lane and the strip before he goes up with the follow through there. So excellent defensive stand by this Gales team. And Luca and Cole can score. They love to bang in terms of defensive tenacity as well. And Cole led all scores with 25 and 18 rebounds yesterday. Joseph the inbounder. Here's Lacombe who's been the glue guy for the Rougiard so far at this tournament. They'll hunt you beyond the perimeter, too, and it's going to be a tough night for Lacombe and Joseph if they're not sturdy. The finger roll, too strong. Elizabeth, magnet in his hands, triple team, missing that one. Duke in traffic, and now LaValle's down by one. I mean, he's a one-man wrecking crew, and you're going to see that's a consistent theme here this evening. He's just soft around the rim, and he can stretch the floor with the three the odd time, too. Driving with menace is Ismail Duf. And now in the game, the British superstar and Cameron Bett. And this will be a whistle going the other way in favor of the Rougiard. 6-14 left in this first quarter. And it's Kruger crashing into the paint there, trying to secure a second offensive rebound at this point. And he'll get called on the follow-through here. He looks so far to the tail of the tape. Two turnovers have accounted for four points for the Gales. In terms of shooting percentage, 30% for Laval, 3 of 10, 4 of 8 for the Gales at 50%. Early clues in this game, who has that momentum the first three and change? I mean, I, both sides are feeling it, and so is Joseph. He feels it, splash. Laval back up, 10-8. His first basket of the game, Stevie Joseph not afraid to pull the trigger when his number is called, averages 11.6 a game. 
And that's a miss. That's a rebound for Elizabeth off the miscue, courtesy of Kelvin the third. And now Joseph is on the gallop. Lacombe. And a whistle on the play. And this is going to be a foul on Lucas, Lucas Silas as he and Cole Silas were in on the tag team. And that will be the second, third team foul now on the Queens Gales non shoot. And you see Lacombe with the double fist call there in terms of the inbound play. And it'll be him, the two of him and Joseph up top. Lacombe against Silas. Here is Elizabeth from the free throw line. There's a high low again. And they're crashing on them quick. Eight left in the shot clock. Joseph missing that jumper. Rebound, Doof. He spikes it back over to Kruger. And now they bring on some size, giving away Lacombe with the recovery. Lacombe backing up, and he finds Doof. Magical and an autograph from Ismail Doof. They are flying up 12 eights. He's got seven and ten and half eight. No one outside of ten and has scored yet for Queens. The geometry has been solid for Laval, and that wasn't right for Silas. The Gales a little bit wobbly at the knees in the early going of this matchup with five to go in this first quarter play. And Kruger and Elizabeth just throwing each other around. They'll go back to work in the paint. And they're crashing on Elizabeth. That is their plan A right now. Whenever Elizabeth gets the ball, anyone in that neighborhood, you crash on the number 13 uniform. And a dedicate about to come back in for the Gales. And here's a replay of what has transpired. And you see this Lacombe play, cheek in class, as he held this Queens Gales frozen for a moment. Timeout called in the courts. 12 8 lead for Laval over Queens. Early in this game, this is the 2024 Green Shield U Sports Final Eight presented by Michelob Ultra on CBC Sports. My 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. <laughs> Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. The 2024 GFU Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy is headed to the campus of the University of Saskatchewan for the first time on March 14th to the 17th. Single game tickets start at $10 for children, $22 for adults. Click the QR code at the bottom of your screen or visit usas.universitytickets.com to order your tickets today. The 2024 Green for Life U Sports Women's Hockey Championship in Saskatoon, Chase the Glory. And it's Laval who's trying to chase the glory against Queens in the early going up by four. Joseph, nylon. 40% from the mark now, two of five. And Stevie Joseph slaying a fly here in the first quarter and the home crowd loving it. And they're up by seven of a touchdown. Biggest lead for either side. Kelvin the third, he's wiry. Ball Cameron hits Betts. Missing that rebound, Elizabeth. He let the team in scoring with Luca out of that quarterfinal matchup with 16 off the bench. Wembe, 60% from the field, and they're up by a score of 17 8. Well, I mean, he's 11th in terms of field goal percentage at 65%. He averages five and a half a game, and a, look at that offense. So things are starting to unravel a little bit here for the OUA champs in the middle stages of this first quarter. Right now, Queens have had a fruitless trip or two along the way and they have scuffed a couple of opportunities and now for Queens to kind of have to take a deep breath let this marinate and take on what they have to go which is not only five of our players but a few thousand who's your fans. Well four turnovers to the tune of eight points for the home side certainly doesn't help the Gales cause. Well you talk about the Gales they're the heart attack kids out here some of the games they've had so far in the playoffs have been absolutely sumptuous. Luck home for the 45. Missing the three, rebound right there is Tennant, who's already on six so far. Then again on the run, and now looking to get through this Laval fortress. Here is Tennant against Elizabeth. Trying to find an outlet now using his lower deltoids, and he will go and no good. Rebound for Silas, new 14. Kelvin the third. Back heel, rebound Joseph. 
That's a good look at the end of the day, but you just have to get the stop now on the other side, being down by nine, and see Wembe fighting and positioning with Calvin the third. Joseph, push off, jumper, it's good. He's coming in installment so far in this tournament, and he's come up with two more points. Now he's got a team high eight now, just got seven. It's a one-two combo that has been clicking here early. 11-point lead, here are the Gales. Calvin the third against Elizabeth in the paint, whistle. That will be a foul called on Harris Elizabeth, who was in the 2022 Nationals in Edmonton. And here's the replay of the move by Kelvin III. Well, you see the sweep and then that left hand on the inside just trying to cut him off slightly, trying to beat him inside path to the middle of the lane. It'll be a baseline possession here. You'll see they'll space him out in the corner here and try and free up Bet. And back out it comes to Bet. Here is a dedicate. The lefty stripped by Joseph. Now the Rougeur are off and running. Three on three. Joseph, the teardrop, the floor, no good. Put back from Duke. Timeout called. 2.57 left. 21 8 lead for Laval over Queens. You are watching the 2024 Green Shield U Sports Final 8 presented by Michelob Ultra on CBC Sports. Welcome back here to St. Foix, Quebec, the site of the 2024 Green Shield U Sports Final Eight presented by Michelob Blade on CBC Sports. Great Campbell, Mo Kong, Greg. Queens is at the knees right now. They're taking a, a blow to the jaw from the Laval Rougeur. What do they have to do to get back in this game down by 13? They need stops at the end of the day. I mean, Laval shoot 47% from the field. 9 of 19, they've had 6 more shot attempts than the Gales, and you have to box out in transition. And Silas, and one! Vibrant, a killer out there on the court, and Lucas Silas scoring 17 the game, now silence the crowd momentarily. Yeah, you got 20 in their win yesterday to go along with 7 rebounds and 3 assists, 2 steals, but you see right out of the timeout, call their own number. And Wembe is a little frustrated because he thought Tennant just blocked him out in that case, and he's wondering how he got called for the foul. But regardless, one of the best scores in the country at the line. Silas is a maverick out there. And a putback, no gift from Tennant. A new 14 for Queens. And that is incomplete, and that goes out of bounds, and Laval breathing a sigh of relief as it's only still a low point lead. Well, I mean, everyone's going to watch where the ball is going in the passes, but you want to appreciate good old-school basketball between both sides. The work that's going to go inside the paint is going to be huge for both teams, as you see the horns look right off the bat. Joseph has brought the pace and ability. He's in the mood today. And here he is, off the window, too strong, over the back, rebound, Doof, six left in the shot clock. Mwanza, Joseph, Lavoisier, reload. Rims out, up in the air, Kelvin the third. He is a pogo stick out there. Jump ball, arrow point towards Queens. 2.18 left. And the game of basketball has changed from the size composition of how players play, but the dreadnoughts, Kelvin the third. You talk about Duke, you talk about Elizabeth, you talk about Kruger, you talk about Silas. There are some guys who can jump out of the gym. Well, the thing is they can pass it too, and they can handle the ball with confidence, and that's the difference. I mean, they can stretch the floor. You see Duke with a couple of timely threes throughout this tournament, as is Kelvin the third. So they can beat you inside out. Silas, here comes the other Silas, the hook. And that is up in the air, right to Tenet, denied by Malanza. First block of the day for Laval. They hit about two and a half blocks per game. And that is a whistle with nine left in the shot clock. And a dead again. 
Gotcha. A little arm wrestling with Steve Joseph. Just, yeah, a little slow to get up, and he's shaking it off. He's a bit rattled, but what I talked about, they're going to let him play, but within a controlled means, and so far underneath the net, it's been a little bit of a construction zone, to state the least, and uh, Stephen Barry's just trying to get clarification on why there was no call there. Sidecar pass. Lucas Illis for the free throw line. Yes! A stunning display by him so far is now down nine for Queens. I mean, he's a shot creator for a reason and getting very efficient from the field so far. You talk about him, he's a gem among the crown jewels for the Gales. Doof. Post play, Elizabeth facing against Adetigan. The jumper off the back, rebounded by Tennant, who's been absolutely everywhere. And Adetigan now is on his bike. Still is coming in. Pirouette. He bamboozled Elizabeth, and now they're on a 6 0 run down by seven. And there's good footwork in the block there by the other Silas and Cole. And up until that point, Luca and Tennant had all 12 points. And you talk about Tennant being around the rim, five rebounds already. And the quick hands remains Laval ball, 12 left in the shot clock. It was uh, a rampage start for the Rougiora. They've kind of simmered down a little bit, and now Queens getting back in this game with their style of play. And remember, yesterday against Ottawa, they were down 30-23, called the timeout. They won a 23-5 run and never looked back. Well, they're elite defensively, second in points allowed per game at 71. And sure. an altered shot there in first and field goal percentage for oppositions at 38. So they know how to do their work defensively. Back out to Calvin the third. This could be a moment now inside a minute left in this first quarter. At that again. And that rims out, and that goes off of Queens. And in fact, it looks like Mawaza might have last touched it. It was called against Cole Sillis. Good screen there by Anderton Tennant, though, to give it again a free look at the rim there as Lacombe's going to check back into this game. 47.2 left. That's the voice of a great person, Greg Campbell Mokon, here on this Sunday night, the last game of the calendar season. And now Fabrice Watier in the game for the first time for the Rougeau. Lacombe from the 45. Nylon! You can't hedge your bets on the inside because they continue to make them pay three of eight for the land beyond now. And again, just a good squeeze and takes the shot as there'll be a touch foul there going towards the sideline on the freshman in Moenza. And uh, then again, uh, Ismail Dufour getting well acquainted out there. I'm not sure if they're going to be exchanging Easter eggs during the month of March. And here is a replay of the uh, finish from Lacombe. And you see just Tenant started to go inside with Elizovich there, and then that's more than enough space for Lacombe who. We saw when he was out of the lineup in the quarterfinal matchup, just a different tempo and a different feel in terms of the pace of the game for the Laval Rouge or then when he gets going, especially in a full court game, coast to coast, he's fun to watch. Side out, here are the Gales. 28.2 left in this first quarter play. Tenant, Silas for the center arc. Splash! That's and that could be their passport to get back in this game. Yeah, that's a problem because he's got five now and Luca's got six. So you get the two of them going and consistently that's where you got to stop the bleeding if you're the Rouge or The accelerators are starting to really rev up. Last roll of the dice for Laval in the first quarter play. Five left in the game clock. Here's Lacombe against Silas. Lacombe, two seconds left. And that rims out at the end of one. Round one goes to Laval over Queens. They're up 24-17. You're watching the 2024 Green Shield U Sports Final Eight, presented by Michelob Ultra on CBC Sports. I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. <laughs> Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. 
The 2024 U Sports Women's Volleyball Championship is headed to the campus of McMaster University, Hamilton, Ontario, March 15th to the 17th. Tournament packages and single game tickets are on sale now. Click the QR code at the bottom of the screen or visit marauders.ca slash tickets to order your tickets today. The 2024 U Sports Women's Volleyball Championship in Hamilton, Ontario chased the glory. And right now, Queens is chasing Laval down by seven. It felt like momentum was going towards the team from Kingston, Ontario. How does Laval maintain their focus and not get Queens a little bit closer to the scoreline that they're at right now? Well, I think it comes down to the boxing out in the paint and second chance opportunities. I mean, Ismail Duff, a fantastic first quarter, right where he left off in the fourth quarter yesterday. He has a game high nine points and three rebounds right now. And then Stevie Joseph with eight, but both Silas brothers have combined 11 points. Ten in chips in as a tertiary in that surprising first quarter six rebounds five assists but you want to get back to the inside and try and work it there but for the gales it's a reason why they're 19-3 they were they won the wilson cup i mean they're they're a good team they've been here three straight years and they know what it takes and they're ready to get into a dog fight and make it scrappy if they have to here is tenant back out to lucas Silas. And you could see his quick silver ability. He's ruthless and he's clinical and down by six, by five. And it's a clean sweep there off the jab. And Joseph almost traveled again. And he's done that once in the first quarter. And now we see it right off the bat. But the high low with Elizabeth and Duff is something they worked well in the fourth quarter against Dalhousie yesterday. 11-3 run for the Gales over the Rougeur after their timeout. Joseph missing the three. It's gone cold. And now it is the Gales who are on their run. Can they find the efficiency back out? And the three from Bet missing that one up in the air on the byline. New 14 for the Gales. Bet reload. Splash. And now it's a one score game, and silence has fallen here in St. Foix. Would you be able to predict that right now? Queens is winning the rebounding battle by 6, 16 to 10 right now. I mean, they are putting work in the block, and they're being asked to do it again. Top 10 team in Canada, at 43 rebounds per game. Elizabeth, can he solve the riddle of the Gales? They are crashing on him. And he is knocked down. And right now for Nathan Grant and his Rougier, they're hoping to get back that taunt that they had for the first four minutes of play when they flew out of the gates. As you see from the replay right here with Eliz Elizabeth going down. Well, he takes a couple dribbles and then Bet tries to cut him off on the spin there. And the problem is he pushes him right onto the baseline instead of just cutting off the path towards it. And it'll be baseline possession with 14 on the shot clock. Joseph the inbounder. Here is Elizabeth. See a clear out, Elizabeth calling for Joseph to get it and then work the high low. Doof overload now to the left. Here is Joseph, six left in the shot clock. And Kelvin the third will be called for the foul. Bass will not count. Non shoot side out, new 14, 845 left. And you see that silky player skill sets that Steve Joseph has for the Laval Rougier. I mean, you see there that they're going to decide not to get the ball in his hands. And the second time he's gone up against Kelvin the third on a switch there. and. His length gets the better of him there. He can't get into the lane, but he has to reach to stop him from penetration. Splitting through, teardrop, back heel, rebound, Kelvin the third. That's a strong rebound, too. And look, downhill they come again. You better be ready for four quarters of this. It is four, 40 minutes of intense hell. Kevin, Kelvin the third missing that one. And rebound to Sadu Saul. One score lead for the Rougeau. A 5 0 run for the Gales to start the second quarter. Doof inside the postal code. Elizabeth in the mountains. No good. Rebound right back over to Laval, La Rizière. And Saul will slow, slow it down once more. Joseph. Doof denied by Kelvin the third. The telescopic arms of Kelvin the third put that ball back into Silas's hands. And that ball is sent down the 4 1 towards Kingston. And there's miscommunication there. The fifth turnover of the game, and they've got eight points off the four they've committed so far. So, one that they're going to want to have back there is Cole will check out the game and again back in. Looks like a substitution for the Rouge Aura as well. Right now, this has been a crazy contradiction of a game. Out in Queens was a crisis after the first quarter, and now they're almost smelling like roses. Elizabeth denied. Another block for the Gales. And that's the length of 10 in. He can recover so quickly. The alley. The putback. We are back to parity. 24-24. 7.37 left in this first half. Timeout called on the courts. 
You are watching the 2024 Green Shell U Sports Final Eight, presented by Michelob Ultra on CBC Sports. Feel every hit, goal, and celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline, immersing you in the game like never before, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. We deliver unparalleled simplicity and tailor-made digital broadcasting solutions crafted to make you feel every moment in a way like never before. Our passionate team ensures your message reaches audiences reliably every time. Proudly Canadian, we bring a touch of innovation and our passion to the world stage. ISI Live, be there. Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. It is gold medal Sunday. We are doing the men's first. The women's come up afterwards. Don't forget, U Sports on CBC has exclusive coverage of the 2024 Final Eight Women's Basketball Championship presented by the Empton Weston. Cast U Sports gold medal will gain live from the University of Alberta tonight at 9.30 p.m. East, only on CBC Gen and cbcsports.ca. And a 24-24 game here, and it feels like, Greg, that Queens has momentum. Well, it's a tale of two tapes that first quarter, a seven-point lead for the Rouge Or They continue their winning ways in the first quarter, capitalizing on home court advantage, having won it the other day, 21-11. But Queens started to settle in, and by settle in, I mean they're going to attack you in the transition game, they're going to put pressure on you, as you can see here in the full court. And more importantly, they're winning the rebounding battle big right now. They've had some auxiliary defending whenever Elizabeth gets the ball. They always crash on him. And now here's Lizzieau. You see the push under by Tennant there. He wants to stay with Elizabeth. He'll ride that hip. They're fasting for points, Laval. They need some now. Lizzieau against Silas. Splash! Three-pointer four now in the first half compared to two for the Gales who are shooting 18% from the land beyond. And now is Lucas Silas' time. He is a predator for points, and that will not count, and this will go the other way. And now for the Queens Gales and for the Laval Rougiard, we are in a serious boxing battle here. They're going body blow after body blow. It might come down to the knockout shot by one of these teams for the game-winning opportunity. I mean, it's going to be a game of inches and possession by possession, literally. Wembe, the only player in foul trouble with two. And on the other side, it's actually Cameron Bett with his second now. So they're going to put him on the bench here, knowing he's their first option off the bench. Real quality from both teams in this first half. Watte at the logo. Watch by Connor Kelly. Due from the elbow against Kelvin the third. And that time, the menace won that battle against Kelvin the third. First player into double figures, but that's good defense by Kelvin the third. Just a high finish. Silas, put back, whistle, foul, tenant. And there's an injured uh, Queens Gale player on the court. It might be Silas who's on his back as he and Elizabeth uh, collided midair. I mean, it's going to be a train wreck inside that. Uh, paint area anytime the shot goes up you look at the one end so the sweep and the turnaround he sweeps right to left and then good finish off class with the left hand by the big man he's soft around the rim we've seen it all tournament but the other side we talk about Diff and Elizabeth and having to account for them as Elizabeth heads to the bench in terms of boxing out same thing with Aaron Tennant this kid can fly and people that know him from the Western Mustang days I mean he's a highlight reel He's having the game of his life so far outside of that free throw so far. Eight points, eight rebounds, and we've got 6.33 to go here in the first half. Well, he's not the most pristine free throw shooter at 44% this season. And you see why. Rebound right to Queens, a new 14 for them, courtesy of Lucas Silas on the twist and the turn. Went being in the game for the first time, now the second time. Back door and a two-handed autograph from Tennant to make up for the two missed free throws. That is where he makes his living on a daily, and he is confident there. You'll see him come out in terms of moving the ball on the perimeter, but anything inside of seven to eight feet, he's pretty close to automatic there. Notice the owl. Wembe and Kelly. Nowhere to go. Cold to sack for him. Wembe. Doof, taken away by Adetigan, and now the Gales are back on the run. They hit about seven steals per game. But again, the alley 
Kellum the third somehow corkscrewed his way through. But it remains Queen's ball with 5.53 left in this first half. Wembe and Kellum the third getting well acquainted with one another as well as Lacombe. He's going to check back into the game. The question becomes for Nathan Grant and his team. When you get, oh, never mind. I stand corrected. Him and Stevie Joseph are on the court. It's just a different combination when you have their speed and their proudness. Silas. Forensic touch on the finish, and now it's a one-point lead for Laval. Well, he had a good strip there in Joseph, but again, the size of Silas makes up for it on the second chance. Do facing up against Tennant, against uh, a big part of Cole Silas, number eight. There's Any better glasses, I think. There's a switch off, so they'll switch it back there. Good defensive recognition. Lerizier against Kelvin Third from the highway. Nyla! Jenny Lerizier had some clutch moments. And pressure makes diamonds, and he's looking like a diamond in that shot. And a second main three-pointer as well. Silas, back heel. Lacombe can't get to it. New 14 for Queens. And here's the dead again. Against Duke. Tough shot. And he's fouled and will go to the line for two free throws. A flare player is Fofo Adedigan, scoring 12 a game from Regina, Saskatchewan. And you talk about his body composition. He has worked out his upper body. He looks like he is in peak physical condition. Guy looks like he could go to the bodybuilding show next week, honestly. But the team shooting on the season free throw wise are 68%. That's in the middle third, we'll call it, of the OUA. But clutch yesterday, 84% for the line, 21 to 25. Two point lead for the Rougiard Laval. Having there as squeezes his way between three guys and then wraps his way around Wemby, starts bringing him down, tries to grab for Diff's foot at the end, and then as he gets stepped over, he wants to give Wemby a little swipe at the end for extra measure. If it feels a dead again. And a dead again at the line this year, shooting 75%. Tenant by the scorer's table. And a back heel free throw right there. And uh, again, with this being a, a game that's very plush, and that means close, four-point lead, free throws could be the disdain for a team that misses them the most. And Denigan is one of two, three-point lead, 424 left in this first half. And back in the game is Aaron Tennant. He is a human pogo stick out there, jack in the box, using his London trickery and magic at times in this first half. And he's been the X Factor so far, I think, for the Gales. Yeah, and here's a matchup right away. Him and Diff are going to size each other up. But at 10 again yesterday, 11 points, 9 rebounds. But again, they, they shot 11% beyond their season average in their win. Now, there's the air in traffic. Now, there's the air losing it. And this will be Queen's ball. And now the Gales have a chance to get this down to one or maybe tie it up at 34 with four weight left in this first half. You better be sure where you're going with the ball when you attack the paint area because every time they're spinning out to try and circle it out, the help's coming and it's closing in a hurry. And it is back in the hands of Cole Stills, the 
quarterback of this offense trying to find the killer pass. Lucas Silas. Cole in the lower block. Lucas Silas trying to find it. Quick hands. Lizier couldn't get that by. And now inside the mountains, the fadeaway. And he cannot scale the peak of the hill. And back over to see Joseph Bigo. I'm surprised he just didn't go at him to try and draw a foul out of him. Doof. The out. The supplier. And there is a whistle. And Nathan Grant is explaining to Ismail Doof, be more aggressive when you see the crash on you. He's got to get that out of his hands quickly because then you can get that ball moving as the Tuttigan is going to check back into the game. We'll check out Lucas Silas, who ties with Aaron Tennant right now at 10 points. We talk about the supply line, and it's gone through the Silas boys. It's gone through Duke and Steve Joseph. Yeah, they've got 19 combined. Jeff's got 11. And here is Duke. Kick out. Saul from 17. Front rim, rebound right to Connor Kelly, and Elizabeth has been very quiet so far for the Rougeur. Silas in the paint to the left. No good. A dead again. It's good. And now they're down by one. 313 left in this first half. Story of the first half. They've got more offensive rebounds now. 14 compared to total rebounds for Laval, who has 13. They've got 27-13 advantage. We approach the thick end of the three minutes of this first half. One point lead for Laval. And now the Gales on their way for the first lead. They got it. Timeout call by Grant. 2.57 left in this first half. And all of a sudden, the Queens Gales showing why they're regal on the hardwood. Stay tuned. You're watching the 2024 U Sports Final Eight, presented by Michelob Ultra and CBC Sports. Welcome back here, 35-34 lead. Queens getting the lead back once again. It's been a long time in this matchup here. And it's been an absolute screamer of an effort from the depth chart of the Gales who've come on from the bench and carried the load compared to the Ballads where they've really relied on Doof and Steve Joseph. Well, you wonder how much legs they're going to have as this game continues when you shorten up the bench. They're all going to lay it on the line. That's already assumed at this point. But how much of the lactic acid builds up and those offensive rebounds, 14 of them has accounted for 16 points for the Gales. Those the air, nowhere to go. For three. One and done on that, and it looked like it was a disjointed possession for the Rougiori. And here comes still it's the quick hands from the Rizial, trying to make a man for his miss. He's fumbled it around a couple times here. Very twitchy with it. And here's a player who has been twitchy. A dead again. The jumper. And the rebound right to Sadu Saul, and he goes right over to Steve Joseph. We are now 220 away from halftime. Saul. Joseph against Silas. Larizier in the paint. Bounce pass. Doof, head fake. And LeBounce back up one. Yeah, he sized up Tennant there, and he knew Tennant was going to sky point. So good, patient look there to kiss it off the bank for two. He's a showman out there, Ismail Doof. And here is another showman, the Silas boys. And with it now is Cole Sillis. And he misses that put back there by Tennant, who has not been accounted for so far. He's been flamboyant when the ball is in the air. Yeah, they rested him a couple times in the semifinals and quarterfinals. His legs are fresh, as you can see. Doof missing that rebound. Kelly and now back over to Adet again with 133 left in this first half. That's because Kelly comes to help. Adet again put back. And Tennant has been absolutely a monster, a menace, and stardust and star bursts on the court. How about the classic Tim's double double in the first half here? He's got 14 and 10. For the tie, no good. Laval starts to run out of steam in this first half. They need the team talk badly, and this could get a little bit bigger of an insurance policy for the Gales up by three. 
and they know it. They have attacked the pressure points of the Rougier, and this is the reason why. It is Brad Aaron Tennant, and he's called for the turnover. His side 14 goes out of bounds. So they'll actually mark him here at, now they've updated it appropriately at this point. But in terms of the turnovers, they're 10th in the OUA in the regular season, averaging 14 turnovers a game. And then you look at the other side, the Rouge or averaged seven steals a game. That's in the lower half of the RSEQ. But the full-time pressure, full-court pressure, I should say, is going to be nonstop on both ends of the court. And it's tip for tat right now. It's a very important last minute here in Laval. This is going to be an important possession for the Rouge or They're down by three. They're going to get two cracks here if they play this right. So. Back out to Joseph Whistle. Kelvin the third will be called for the foul. And that will be team number five foul-wise for the Queens Gales. That will put Laval in the bonus, albeit with 52 seconds left in this first half. And that'll be his second personal foul there. As you see, just the jab in the chest there before the dribble started. And if it wasn't for the bonus, it would be a side out in this case, but instead he'll head to the line. Pair fouls for him and Kruger right for now as well as Lucas Silas and Cameron Bat. Coming up at halftime, we reveal the brackets for the men's and women's hockey and volleyball at halftime. So stay tuned for that for those who are puck heads and volleyball fans. Joseph with it and now it is a two-point lead with 52 seconds left. And now a one point lead. They've yet to miss from the line tonight. Three of seven are the Gales for 43% on the other side. Cole Sillis back out to Connor Kelly. The former Bishop Gator knows this arena very well. And then again, pirouetting, turning on Saul, and for two. And he's been absolutely crucial for Queens so far in this first half. Bank stays open late on a Sunday night, but it goes back to that right hand. From the center arc, too strong. Rebound and dead again, whistle the play. And it was Webby that's going to draw it this time. In the game now is David Ion for the Gales, wearing the number four shirt from Calgary, Alberta. And now Webby at the line for the first time today, a 64% free throw shooter at the line for the Rougiore. Get a pair of substitutions for Nathan Grant as well. And for Queens, that's a little bit of a swing there because you, you got the stop you wanted to and you could have padded your lead, but instead, we'll try and close it to one. And right. now at the Lions, Wembe. The two biggest free throws here for the Rouge in the first half. Hart pounding the ribcage, and he gets the first one. 25 or 24 15 advantage for Queens here in the second quarter after being down by seven to begin it. It's a resilient bunch, these two teams. Webby misses that one. And the tie is not there, and we are still a two-point lead for Queens. And a heart-and-mouth moment ends up being a relief for the Kales with 13 ticks left in this first half. Here is Cole Sillis. Sidecar pass to Kelly. They get the switch they want on the big. Sillis at the death. Got it. And at the end of the first half, it is Queens up by four, 43-39. We're through 20 with 20 to go. You are watching the 2024 Green Shield U Sports Final presented by Michelob Ultra on CBC Sports. Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all.
They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. And welcome back here to halftime, and everyone's waiting for the big announcement here. The bracket reveal for the men's and women's hockey and the women's volleyball. It's all going to be revealed now. Let's unveil the first bracket for the GFL women's hockey tournament that's going to be held in Saskatoon as we get ready for that moving forward here. And your number one seed for this year, the RSQ champion Concordia Stingers, who come in at 25 and 2. The number two seed from Canada West, the champions, the UBC Thunderbirds, who are making their third straight appearance at the championship, also making their third straight appearance, is the third seed in AUS champs, UMB Reds. Champions followed by the fourth ranked Waterloo Warriors, who won their first OUA title last night on the overtime goal by Paige Rhino. And drawing the fifth seed from the AUS St. FX women's team. And the OU runner ups from the University of Toronto are seated sixth. And the number one seventh seed is the Caravan de Montreal, the silver medalist from the RSEQ. And finally, the number eight seed goes to the host, Saskatchewan Huskies. So the matchup for Thursday goes like this at 3 p.m. in St. FX against Waterloo. Followed by on Friday, Monday against uh, Montreal against UBC in a seven versus two matchup, and of course the final quarter final matchup will be the six seed Toronto team against UMB Reds at 9 p.m. on Friday night. Join us for all the action of the 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship beginning Thursday at 3 p.m. East, noon Pacific on CBC Gem, CBCSports.com, and CBC Sports YouTube. And as for the Men's, the 2024 University Cup gets underway this Thursday from Maple Leaf Gardens with a pair of quarterfinals on CBC. And here are your rankings. The number one seed, the undefeated UMB Reds. The number two seed, the UQTR Patriot of the, R of the OUA, who posted a 21-7 record during the regular season. The number three seed, Canada West champion, UBC Thunderbirds. The number four, or the host and OUA silver medalist, the Toronto Metropolitan Bowl, check in at the number four seed. Followed by the OUA bronze medalist, the McGill Redbirds, who are the number six seed. And then egg the brother the Moncton returned to the national tournament as the AUS silver medalist and are seated seventh. And finally, the Brock Badge are the host team. They come in at the number eight. So the matchups for Thursday's quarterfinals are this. At 1 p.m., it's number eight Brock against number one UMB. At 7 p.m., it's number five Calgary against number four Toronto Metropolitan. On Friday, Moncton faces UQTR at one Eastern. And the final quarter and the final quarterfinal is McGill against UBC at 7 p.m. on Friday night. Join us for all the action of the 2024 University Cup from Toronto starting Thursday at 1 p.m. East, 11 a.m. Uh, 10 a.m. Pacific on CBC Gem, CBC Sports.ca, and YouTube for CBC. And after this timeout, we will unveil the draw for the 2024 volleyball championships. You're watching U Sports at CBC. The exchange was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it.
Welcome back here. Let's unveil the University Cup. We've done that already, and now it is time to unveil the brackets for the volleyball tournament that we have coming up here. And of course, the number one seed, the RSEQ champion, Valley Elk the Sherbrooke, are a top seeds with a perfect 20 0 record. They're seeking their second U Sports title. They last captured this title back in 1975. The number two seed from the Can West champions, University of Alberta. Number three seed, the OUA champion, McMaster Marauders, who are your champions. The fourth ranked Trinity Western Spartans, the Canada West Silver Medalists, draw that number. That's fifth seed. The host, Queens Gales, who are your OUA finalists. They were your bronze medalists as well as UBC are your sixth seed. Number seven is the Laval Rougiard. Number eight is the Guelph Griffins. So the matchups for Thursday quarterfinals go like this. At 12 East, it's the Al it's Alberta seeking their record time 10 national titles facing Laval who seek their fifth national title. UBC takes on Mac in the 2 p.m. window. Number five seed Queens takes on Trinity Western, and number eight takes on, well, takes on Sherbrook as the number one seed. And as for your women's, here are your draw. The number one seed, Manitoba Bison, at 20 and four. Number two seed, UBC Thunderbirds, at 22 and two. Number three is Brock Badgers. Number four, Alberta Pandas. The number five seed, the Caravan de Montréal, they come in at 17 and four. Number six is Acadia Axewoman, and number seven, McMaster Marauders, and the number eight seed are the St. Mary's Huskies. As for the schedule on Friday, it is Smeo taking on Manitoba in the first game at 12 noon. And at 2 p.m., it is Montreal against Alberta, the four versus five matchup. And the two versus seven matchup is UBC against McMaster at 6 p.m. And also at 8 p.m., it is Brock against Acadia in the three versus six matchup. All these games, you can watch it all on CBC Gem, CBC Sports.ca, and CBC Sports YouTube. And again, a lot of sports happening these next couple weeks here. And right now at halftime, it is Queens up by a score of 43-39 over Laval. We'll have the halftime stats, and we'll be back for second half action here from the 2024 Green Shield U Sports Final 8, presented by Michelob Ultra on CBC Sports. Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. <laughs> Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. It's that moment again, the one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite, of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais, quand toutes les chances sont contre toi, when you can't push one more second, Chase the glory. Viseo. Welcome back here, halftime. It is a lead of four for Queens over Laval, up by four. It's moving to the second half here from St. Paul, Quebec at the Desjardins Amphitheater. And look at these first half stats. Uh, you gotta admit, Queens is definitely winning the uh, key numbers, but three pointers has been the lifeline for the Rougeur at 38%. Well, the numbers that they don't have listed there right now, the rebounding battle, 32-15 advantage. They have as many offensive boards as the Rouge Or have total, and that's led to 18 second chance points. A big reason why, and we mentioned that he was going to be a problem in terms of his length, but we did think it was going to be offensively, mind you. Aaron Tennant, 7 of 10 from the field to lead all scorers on the court with 14 points and a ridiculous nine rebounds and three assists so far. All right, so we, we get ready for second half action here. Four-point lead as we get ready. Before we go to break, 
one key factor for Laval and Queens is what to win this game. Elizabeth has to get back into the game. He, he's been quiet all evening. He's got five rebounds, but he's one of eight from the field. I mean, they tried to force the issue early with that high low with Elizabeth and that uh, doof, but they've done a good job boxing him out. They've got done a good job in terms of preventative defense. And then if you're Queens, I mean, it sounds really corny, but stay the course of crashing downhill in transition, continue to be aggressive in your doubles because they've caused troubles for the bigs so far for the Rouge Or. Four point lead. We're minutes away from the start of the second half. Could Queens win their first, or will it be Laval that will pull off an Oscar Award performance on Oscar night? Stay tuned here from St. Paul, Quebec. You're watching the 2024 Green Shield U Sports Final Eight presented by Michelob Ultra on CBC Sports. Welcome back here to Laval University, and uh, the guile was discovered by Queens in that second quarter play. Uh, round one went to Laval, round two went to Queens, and now we got maybe two more two more rounds for sure, maybe a fifth round. Who knows if it has to go, if it has to go to overtime. People are never going to complain about free basketball, partner. No, they won't. No, they won't. But right now, the key now is who could be the one to lead their team to victory here. It will be Laval possession who are going right to left for the second half. And here is Steve Joseph. Harris Elizabeth back in the game. He's one of eight so far. And we'll see if he can open up his account in this second half of play. Joseph 10 in the first half. Lacombe, airborne. No good. Rebound right to Queens. And you see the pace right away. They're going to go at you in numbers, and you better collapse. And Silas could not finish that play. And away we go back and forth. And Lacombe back on the run. And Joseph now will slow it down with Lacombe, and that's deflected by Dead again. And this will be Laval ball with 16 left in the shot clock. Well, and when you have Joseph and Lacombe both on the court, they like to be the energizer bunnies as well and push the pace. The issue is that Queens is just recovering so well, and then they're getting their switch offs when they have a mismatch potentially defensively. Quebec's last appearance in the national title game was in 2005. Their last national title was by Bishops in 1998, led by Ryan Thorne who is the current McGill Redbirds head coach. Coached by Eddie Palmikala as well, the legend in Southern Quebec. And there's a whistle to play, and that will stop it with 19 left here in this third quarter of action. And you see all right, Lucas Silas, the senior, with his hands on his knees for a second there. A couple of seconds to catch his breath, but it's going to take that kind of effort for four quarters for both sides. They're going to be exhausted. It's going to look ugly at times, but you got to make plays to win a national championship. There is Lucas Silas. Back door, Cole Sillis, and he missed the finisher on that play. That's two close range shots missed by Queens in the first minute of play. He's still sitting at nine points. Sillis and Tennant, the only ones in double figures for the OUA champs. Elizabeth Mawanza for the 45. And that lacked any purchase. And back to the Queens, it goes up by four. And Mawanza is going to be called for the foul. And right now, 
for Mwanza. He's had those uh, rush of blood moments where if it doesn't go his way, he takes a cheap foul, and he did that right now against Queens. Well, him and Wembe have three apiece, and Elizabeth sitting at two, but you see the attention, and that was a game plan right off the ball. Bye. Anytime Harris Elizabeth touches the ball, it's a fast double and a crash, and you see that's an unnecessary one there in the trip in the backcourt. And here is Cole Sillis, who is a Kingston runaway train of skill sets. Back out to Lucas Sillis. He's been poaching points so far. Dedekin's been getting the rebounds for him. On the pirouette with the left. Denied by Duke. And away go the Rougiore. They have numbers in their favor. Joseph. Duke from the 45. Splash. They've been waiting for that, that whole crowd. His first three-pointer, he's got 16 points now in this game. He really grew against Miguel when he went 9-10 in a late February matchup. Tenant, rebound, back out to Silas. Strong, rebound to Joseph. And back with it, Steve Joseph, a converted field goal gives Laval the lead once again. Oh, yeah, deal for a second on the inside. Joseph, no fear or intimidation. They're back up by one. That's because of his block out by the big man helping him out, going coast to coast with his own number. So it's around Joseph. And acrobatic and emphatic. He went Cirque du Soleil on that finish, and now they're up by one. Please. I love the aggressiveness just to attack him in that situation. And Gets called an Oscar worthy uh, looking charge there in that situation. And a tech on McComb at the end there that had some extra words for Tedigan as he hit the deck. And uh, it's going to be a, a give and take here as Lacombe is a little bit surprised by that. And again, Sidney Lacombe was in foul problems against Uvic on Friday night. And so this will be a free throw here for the Gales. And here's the replay from that moment by Steve Joseph. And you see just the box out there. He seals Cole at the end of it there. But good looking first couple of minutes for that the home side. The first two and a half of 5-2 advantage. And a team that struggled at the free throw line all night at 43% is going to have to deal with the noise here. Isolated at the line is Cole still is 80% from the line this year. Deep breath and test of fiber. Ice fades. And now they're back up to, and for the uh, handful of Gales fans up here in their gold shirts, they're making the loudest noise right now amongst the thousand of Rougeador fans. Well, and the problem is they're shooting the direction in the student section with all the drums and uh, noise and costumes, to say the least. Doof is a whistle, and that will be a foul with 726 left. and. You talk about his ability. He is a flair merchant, merchant on the court. And again, we talk about that point I brought up. He went 9 of 10 against McGill late in February, and he is growing exponentially in his game at both ends of the court for the Rouge Or. Well, he's starting to embrace the role of being the focal point of this program at this point, as well as his face was all over the building here promoting the finals. You can see at the swimming pool right next door. You can see in the workout area. I mean, this guy's got a lot of intensity on the court, and he plays flashy, but he's soft around the rim. Joseph finds Doof, last touch by Doof, and he knew it, and it goes back to the Gales with 7.26 left in this third quarter of action. Stevie Joseph sees him half a second earlier. He's got the correct seal there, and it could have been a flush for two. That would have set this place on their feet. Lucas Silas on the transition. Kelly, who started the game. And now is Lucas Silas. Silas, absolutely sublime. A flame floor out there, and then again with the turnover, and now the Rougeur on the ropes, down by four. Their seventh turnover there, and the lazy one off the inbound. Kelly, bullseye, and they're up by seven. Timeout call by Nathan Grant. 7.02 left in this third quarter, and the Queens Gales are feeling very nice in this second half. You're watching the 2024 Green Shield U Sports Final 8, presented by Michelob Ultra on CBC Sports. The exchange was awesome. Yeah. <laughs>
Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. CBC Sports is the home of University Sports in Canada. Watch the best youth sports men's hockey teams as they face off in the 2024 University Cup live in Toronto. The action begins Thursday, March 14th at 1 p.m. on CBC Gem, cbcsports.ca, and the CBC Sports app and CBC Sports YouTube. Youth sports on CBC, chase the glory. And right now, Greg, Laval is chasing this game because they have not been able to contain the fizz of Queens in the bottle, and they are definitely flying high right now, the Gale. And you see Silas just channeling Joseph right there in the half where he almost lost the handle there. Just slow him down, and one of the guys that's been slowed all night is Elizabeth here. And here is... Look at Tennant's work with his hands beforehand to not allow him any space into the paint. Joseph cannot find the space. A dead again with the rebound. And this might be the seminal moment now for the Gales to put a vice grip on the Rougeur. And Duke is trying to prevent that. And now here is Joseph the other way. Trying to force feed into the pocket corner. No real estate. Denied by a plethora of hands from the Gales. Recovered by Doof. Here's Lacombe. Joseph, near side flats. Splash! That's one thing that has worked out for this team tonight. Now 7-17 seven of 17 from the Lambion, and Stevie Joseph's got three of them. They're down by four. They are holding on to the ropes. A dead again against Duke. Dreadnought against Dreadnought. And the Dreadnought in goal comes up one and done. Still attack him. See if you can get him in foul trouble or bait him on the pump fake. I Joseph. like that idea. Doof looking for a second triple. Bullseye! Six all run for the Rougerard. They're down by one. Back to that three-point shot. I'm accounted for both times. They gambled on the left wing, and he is lethal from that mark in a turnover. Lacombe back over to Silas. A little excitement there. Silas in the teeth, and he is fouled. He was browsing. That's huge because that's Elizabeth's third now. So I mean he's been struggling one of eight and you're attacking one of their premier post players, and now it's going to be decision time for Nathan Grant. And he's looking at the bench. It's middle of the third quarter. He's talking to his assistants. What? How do we want to play this one out? Is the replay coming up right now? And does Wembe come in? It appears yes, he will. It's just a swipe at the end there. I mean, that's what you have to do. You get the game very emotional. Go right into the teeth of that defense, and you get one of their premier players in a first-team All-Star out of this contest. Lucas Silas, the tricks and touches. Not that time. 68% from the free throw line. And now looking for the second free throw from the scene of the crime. 51 50 lead. They get a two point lead for Queens. He's got 15 now. Tennant's got 14. And Silas, Cole, brother, has 10. Joseph Diaf fighting for 34. For the lead. Missed by Lacombe. Rebound, loose ball, and this is a whistle. Push off on Lucas Silas, and that's important because now he's playing with fire with his third personal foul. And what do Queens do right now? What do they do? And they're going to bring in a dead again for Silas. So some of the big hitters will have a rest fight on the bench for the moment. Well, I mean, the difference is you have one guy that goes off for the other side who's one of eight from the field, and this kid's been seven of 15 for 15 points to lead your team in scoring. Wembe, here is Joseph. Doof poked away, and right there he was not looking as Cole Seals using his uh, lengthy arms he has. He has quite the longest arms out there. It goes down to his knees. Well, I mean, James Druin talked about it, uh, about how high this kid's basketball IQ is playing with the Blackjacks over the summer. And the other problem, too, is you lose the ability with Luca to switch off consistently. Lacombe, catch and shoot. Whistle the play, a dead against call for the foul. Three free throws coming up for Lacombe, who this year shot 67 percent for the free throw line this is a laval team we look at the numbers this season greg they made 12 free throws per game 
They shot 69% from the line. Their best was 90% against UCAM. And here's replay on that foul. It's just the landing spot. You didn't allow him to allow land clean, and that one's going to hurt. They averaged 19 personal fouls, committed a game that's 10th in the OUA. And more importantly, this building is back into it at this point. And that's dangerous for any team you've seen here so far in the tournament. Lead back up one. The Porter's kind of a nervous, uh, anxious feeling in the building of when could they come back into this game, and now they've got the full support of the crowd. 9-1 run. Kelvin the third. Duke, rebound. And Kruger might be called the culprit on that play as he knocked over Wembe. Knocked as a polite term for his third foul. He threw him at the end of that one. And here's the replay of this. You see the pushing collision. back and forth, and then usually it's not the first person, but the second that gets caught as the guilty culprit. And he'll walk across the timeline for two. And now it is the prerequisite for free throws being perhaps the signal of victory and Wemby at the line. And that will not help the cause. It still remains a one-point lead. I remember yesterday they were close to automatic, 85%. An 11 point victory over the Tigers. Wedgie. Wow. <laughs> I mean, you see it from the side or a shot, but a free throw, uh, that's as odd as it comes there. And even the fans are a bit uh, perplexed by that. And in fact, this benefits Laval. Because it's a jump ball, possession arrow favors them, so now they get a two for one essentially here. Who would have thought a wedge would come in beneficial for a team trying to hold on to this one point lead? Joseph against Dedigan. Pick from Doof. Play big boy ball in the paint. Lacombe, big boy shot. They're up by three. Lacombe's up to eight now, and he's that other guy you want to see going with Elizabeth on the bench. Denied by Doof. 11, 11 to 1 run for the Rougiore after timeout. 4 30 left in this third quarter play. Lacombe, give and go. Whistle. And Kruger and Wembe had a little two tap dance right there. And Kruger will be called for the foul, who ran the foul issues against Ottawa last night. And now that is number four on him. I'd like and to see this play. one, though, because I think he has a case. I think Wemby is a guilty culprit to start it because he extends his tush to create that separation. And he's just putting his arms up. And at some point, you got to call the guy for crashing in blatantly like that. But that's why the officials are on the court, and I'm up here, and the basketball guards or gods reward him on the first. And he put his back into it, and now he is 0 for 3. Who sings that song? Put your back into it. We won't say who sings that song. We don't give us royalties in that one, my friends. And now here's the chance for the Gales. They've been exonerated on four missed free throws by Wembe. Silas deflected. Wembe coming up with a big intervention on defense. It's been a gem in this third quarter and an energy spark for the home side. Buying time for Elizabeth, who's on the bench with three personal fouls. Joseph. Kick out, Doof. Patrick, no. Rebound, Wembe, no. Oh, 0 for 2, opportunity for the Rougiore, and he's still up by three in the thick end of the final four minutes of the third quarter. And bet, Doof, loose ball. A dead again, sees it right back over to Joseph, and it ping pongs right to Lacombe. They have a four on three to work with. And Lacombe will drop it, Le Rizier. Back heel, and right back it goes to Silas. You see Silas sizing up Lacombe right now for his own number. Silas, and one! He sized them up, he took him to the hoop, and now looking for the three-point sequence. An absolute flamethrower out there for the Queen's Gales. Watch how casually he's looking at him. Looking, looking, and then just enough. Sizes up two and adjusts to that right hand on the inside track at the end of the day. Just baiting him, trying to see if he could outweigh him and go to the line for one more. Elizabeth back in with 3.9 left in this third quarter play. Rebound, Duke. Still sits at a double double, 12 points, 10 rebounds so far. Hunger and exchanges right now with these two teams. It's been bright and beautiful. And one of these teams is looking for that gold medal around their necks. Lacombe. But the key talking point, four missed free throws by Wembe. Well, Joseph. Back in the game now. Three seconds left in the shot clock. At the death, whistle. 
And the shot will not count, but it will be a foul that will be on applied. Bad. And that'll be on bad at the end. That'll be his third as he's fading in the way from the basket there. And the young man who led Queens in points in their quarterfinal win. Well, Tad upset with the call here. And you'll see Stevie Joseph working a ton again there. Crosses over left to right. And then you see the seal out here, but just overshoots in that little reach there on the left elbow. And that's a good call by the officiating crew. Joseph makes it a two-point lead for Laval over Queens. So far, both teams struggling under 60%, and Queens at 46%. They just got to 62 off that first make. This game is nip and tuck. And right now, it is a three-point lead for the Rougiore. 17-11 lead here in the third quarter, and it's back to their style of play. That's favoring them as Queens struggles in the half court right now. A game of contrasting emotions right now. Queens down by three. In. Tennant miss. Elizabeth's rebound. That's just a little strong there for the senior who's got 14 and 9 so far. Now Elizabeth trying to get this through and uh, a miscommunication with Mwanza and Elizabeth football. And it goes back to Queens. 236 left. Then every possession becomes a high currency and you lose it due to a turnover it becomes even more crucial to come up with a stop i think the other thing is two partner is i think they're going to ride lucas Silas out to the bench for the remainder of this third quarter i would feel then fourth quarter no disregard if he catches a fourth right away then that's one thing about thinking to sit him but i think he rides out the cup last quarter of a quarter here kelvin the third here's the dead again Tennant, the best hand so far for Queens. Silas against Elizabeth. Silas lost it. Silas. Go up against him. Looking. And that is back to Silas. He wants it more. He can't get it. Rebound Mwanza. That would have been huge if he did draw the foul because that would have been four. But Joseph, the Energizer Bunny, the other way. Elizabeth double teamed again. Nothing but gold around him. And here's Lerizial. Kelly cuts off the supply line. And they back up with 10 left in the shot clock. Jeff was screaming for a three-point shot of his own. Joseph for three. Front iron, a dedicated rebound. It's now three of seven from the land beyond. 17 points off five of 16 shooting. Kelly trailing. Tenet, jump ball, no. Tenet, back heel, rebound, Connor. Power play almost for Queens with the rebounds. And now it is Silas through the lane. Rejected by Duke. He sends that back to Kingston. And you see that behind the back. It's really slow by Silas off the bat, but it's so effective there. And he's just sizing up the big man. You know he's been waiting to have a block party here on your Sunday evening. Eight seconds left in the shot clock. A dead again. The bulldozer. Good job by Elizabeth staying vertical there, not drawing a foul. One and done for the Gales. And here comes Elizabeth. And Joseph now waiting for the set. Kelly, eyeball to eyeball, Steve Joseph. Joseph. Here's Mwanza. There's Elizabeth. In. And that might have been altered by Kelvin the third. New 14 for Laval. And back out to Joseph, the conductor, the maestro. Joseph stopping, popping. Kelly, that be on nice. No good. Rebound to Queens. And now they're still down by a score of three. Well, that rebounding battle just becoming a little closer. Despite 18 offensive boards for Queens, it's now a 43 30 margin. Rebound. Reload for the tie. And Queens has gone cold from three-point range. Joseph is warming, trailing. Mwanza open. And they miss the three. And this goes back and forth. And here is Queens with the ball in hand with 26, 27 seconds left in this third quarter play. Well, you just see the legs not under Cole Sellis. He and the rest of the scale squad need a break for a busy fourth quarter ahead here on CBC Sports. Lelizier taking on Cole Sillis. The Maverick, I guess Elizabeth, the Eurostep, is good. And now they're down one. Clock is rolling. Lelizier has one more chance. Last action of this fourth quarter for three. And the frantic touch from Mwanza does not come up big. And at the end of three, Laval 57, Queens 56. Post this on your Instagram page. Post this on your Twitter page, your TikTok page. We go to the fourth quarter for this exciting fourth quarter action. You're watching the 2024 Green Shield U Sports Final Eight. 
presented by Michelob Ultra on CFC Sports. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. The 2024 U Sports Men's Volleyball Championship is headed down to the campus of Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario, March 14th to 17th. Tournament packages and single game tickets are on sale now. Click on the QR code on the bottom of your screen or visit gales.universitytickets.com to order your tickets today. The 2024 U Sports Men's Volleyball Championship in Kingston, Ontario chased the glory. And right now, that's next week. All eyes in Kingston are on this weekend, tonight. Queens, Laval, Laval's up by one. One key point for each side is what, starting off with Queens. Starting with Queens is Lucas Silas remains in foul trouble, and how quickly do you roll the dice? Well, just as I predicted, he ran out that third quarter on the bench, and now he's gonna start the fourth quarter matchup with Stevie Joseph. He is the answer at the end of the day, him and his brother Cole on the other side. Does Duff and Joseph have enough to get it going, and who emerges as that third star for the Rouge Or? That can be that star. And here he is, the British native, denied. 10 left in the shot clock. Silas, Joseph, tug of war, still alive. Four seconds left in the clock. Two seconds left in the clock. At the death. Shot will not count, violation. It goes back to Laval. And they've come in robust numbers, attacking the ball handers of Queens. So Discombobulate set to begin this fourth quarter. Laval won the first by seven. They win the second by five after being scored, outscored by 11 in that second quarter. And they're more than content to slow it down into the half court. You're gonna see this pick and roll and Elizabeth just gonna switch off with Duff. Who could come up with the moment of genius? Lacombe, Mawanza, here is Duff. Elizabeth in the low block. Going left to right, Joseph for three, back heel, rebound, right to Elizabeth, new 14. Joseph again, against the dead again, and that is a size mismatch, and unfortunately for the big man, he got called for the foul. That'll be his third him bet. Silas all with three apiece, and then you look at the other side, Wembe with three, and Elizabeth with three, and you see the ball swing from right wing to left, and then that reach with the left hand on that left shoulder is going to get called and forced to trip. And Joseph is slow to get up. Good job by Elizovich, though. He knows he's not having the best scoring night from the field, but he's got 10 rebounds, and he continues to distribute the ball when he gets that attention in the paint. Easy in the eyes this game. No nails for any Gales or Rougier fans watching this right now. Greg Campbell, Mokon fourth quarter action. Nine away from perhaps a national champion being determined. Laval's up by one. Lacombe finds Joseph. Four left in the shot clock from the left elbow. No good. Do for another rebound. New 14 for Laval. Kelly the third didn't do his homework on that one. Second chance opportunity. Flash in the lane. Do starts it. Posterizing. Kelvin the third. Silas Give away, Lacombe. Around one, dropping over, and that will be a charge. And well played by Cameron Bett. And that came at a, at a crucial moment for the Gales because had that three gone in for Laval, it would have popped this roof onto the football field next door. Well, you wonder what's going to be louder, the boos or the cheers in the last couple of minutes here. And you see just a sweep on the inside. Kelly gets bit with a fake, and then the extension at the end of the day says, thank you very much, sir. I'll have some dessert to go with that. 
dinner I've served up throughout the course of this game. And here is Silas with it. Beck got banged in the eye there, and they'll give him a second here on the exchange there. And Tennant got knocked over, and it appears it might be on Mawanza. It looks like it's on Mawanza. That'll be four for him now. Tough sledding so far. Oh, a three from the field. And uh, Nathan Grant. And these, te these teams right now, their heartbeat is going a little bit faster than normal. You wonder how much the referees are going to keep the whistles in the pocket as this game progresses. And I digress. Another whistle, another foul. I think they want to get rid of the chippy nature right away. So yeah. they've seen it's picked up a little bit in terms of intensity, considering the poster dunk that just happened. And they've been physical all night with each other, but trying to set the tone on the officials here in the fourth quarter. Baba Yao comes in for the Rougeur. And Wate goes off. End line possession for the Gales. 14 left in the shot clock. Looked for the lot for Tenen originally. Silas on Yao. And a quick catch in Juice. Baba Yao on the go. And he will slow it down. And here is Elizabeth far away. Open space. La Rizier jumper. You can't miss those. You got his second by the cherry. No foul call. Play on. We go. And here is Silas the other way. Down by three. Elizabeth very, very close to be called for a foul in the trap. And he's got to be a little bit cautious, at least early on in this third, fourth quarter. Yeah, playing with a little bit of reckless abandon in the half court there as he tries to make his way to the lane and the spinoff. Good timing by Elizabeth to cut him off. See that five out look here right now, trying to get their shooters in space. Silas. Kelvin the third, he can launch him. Back heel, rebound, Elizabeth. 7.30 left in this season. Woeful from the three-point line. Three of 18 now. Baba Yao with it. Du facing up against Kelvin the third. Swung around the approach actor. Here is Lacombe. Here is Lerizier. Elizabeth, five left in the shot clock. Against Tenen. A cul-de-sac. Lacombe with the dead. Got it. Up by five. Seven of five left in this ballgame. Silas driving. Rebound. Yao. And here comes Lacombe all by himself. And they'll slow it down, and they want to give this team a bit of a breather oh, here. Oh, open on the back door there, and good hustle by Tennant the other way. And now back the other way is the Gales. They keep attacking Elizabeth in transition, trying to draw the fourth foul on the big man. Silas on the help from the flats. And a rebound right to Yao, who's come on now. Two big rebounds and a steal. They just look so tired right now as Queens, and this is what this Laval team does to you. Whistle the play. Blood on Elizovich there, so he'll have to be checked out. And, a 4 uh, run to start this fourth quarter. He'll have to do a pit stop on the sidelines as Wembe comes back in. Harris Elizovich. He's been chasing that national title. He won with McGill in 2022, and they bowed out in the early round. Timeout call on the court. You are watching the 2024 Green Shield U Sports Final Eight presented by Michelob Ultra on CBC Sports. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visite the shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. After this, another late dinner being served in Edmonton, Alberta. U Sports on CBC has the exclusive coverage of the 2024 Final Eight Women's Basketball Championship. Presented by the Empton Weston. Catch the U Sports Gold Medal game live from the University of Alberta tonight at 9.30 p.m. East. 
only on CBC Jam and CBC Sports.ca. That's to be a good one, partner. Well, and those two te these two teams on the men's side, the opposite in terms of what they're playing for on the women's side, as it'll be the Ravens and the Saskatchewan Huskies battling for women's supremacy across youth sport basketball. Let's see how much energy Queens has left here in the fourth quarter. It's been grueling here. Baba Yao plays some minutes here. Who has the adrenaline feel for the final 623? Yao. The chase out there by Cole. Joseph looking five up the shot clock. Lerazier from the 45. Front rim. He's 0-4 in this second half. And now it comes back to Silas. They're up by five. Silas stumbling. Yao, second steal. Whistle. Foul first. So it's a foul on Queens in transition there on Cole Silas. Surprised they're going to give a, that call there. That'll be his second. Just trying to get a little, do a little too much. You see him call his number and then a nice little strip there and then the reach. And he, oh, good call there. He hooked the left ankle or left shin area exactly. Baba Yao is a 50% free throw shooter this year for the Rougiol. Twice led the team in steals. Had three against Concordia, and he's had three in this game coming in for a cameo. And now he's playing the Supporting Actors Award as they're up by six with 6.06 left in this ball game. Someone's just had an answer for Laval every single game this tournament. Two for two. Because that was clear path, that's why that's called there. They get a two for one again, and look at the swing now. It, seven point lead here so far remember queens was up seven and laval has gone on a 19 to 12 run joseph yao back with it and now it goes back to joseph three left in the shot clock exploding and denied out of bounds by tenny as he gives him a nice eyeball look with no time left on the clock They'll say, get one second left in the shot clock. Yeah, so they'll say he gets one there, but there's the length of Aaron Tennant coming into this game. Wonderful first half, to, as we mentioned. Led all scores, and he's been quiet here in the second half. McComb checks back in. Tennant's still 7 of 13, 14 and 9, but it's been tough sledding for him as they've sealed him out there in the half court. One second left. This is going to be a catch and shoot here for Rougiard. Wow! With the pow finish, and they're up by seven. Kelly got caught chasing there. That's not a good look for Queens here. You had him at one second. They saved by the bell. Silas, acrobatic and emphatic on that play. He's going to have to do everything for them. 17 points, five rebounds, four assists. He's going to keep getting his number called. Or he's going to call his own number more often than not here in the last half of the fourth quarter. The 1998 Bishop Gator team watching with close intent. That is the last time the team from Quebec won. Doof. No basket and a foul call. The last time the Quebec team was in 98. The last time the Quebec team was in the finals in 05 when Concordia played. And now Laval is 5-18 away from breaking the drought that has been there for the Quebec Conference for many years. And you've just been playing complete team ball. As you see, Elizabeth, Elizabeth just going to check out Wemby. And it doesn't matter whose number has been called this tournament. As I've said, they've all chipped in equally. After a semifinal loss in the RSEQ, they're playing brilliantly. Joseph, rebound, Silas. Edgy and nerves right now. They don't look like a team that played a 6-10 and 10 regular season by any stretch. Silas looks like a real menace right now with the sizzler at the net. Yeah, but he's got to have his hands behind his back defensively now, which is unfortunate because he is so elite defensively because he's playing with foul trouble at four. Elizabeth facing up against Tennant. Using his deltoids. Yao. He's come on. He's provided. Elizabeth now with five left in the shot clock. And that is going to be saved. And you know what? Elizabeth should have let that go out of bounds because it was last touched by Queens and he didn't realize that. Another substitution coming for Nathan Grant, who rocked the red blazer Friday evening and their win over the number one team in the country. Switched to gold yesterday. Goes back to the red look here this evening. 4.42 left. 4.40 of intriguing time left in this matchup. Calvin the third with it, watched by Duke. Here is Silas using his deltoids against Lorenzo Going, going, nothing but a double team. Fade away, 
absolutely exquisite by him. And ain't nothing but a cool thing on the finish there. Easy in the eyes right now, using the artistic gravity in that play, and now it's a three-point lead. Laval taking a blow from Queens. Duke with a potential blow. Nylon! Ted knew it there, too, on the late close. He's grimacing as that shot went up. Sellers on the turn. Inside four, the thick end of the four minutes left in this ball game. Silas, Lucas Silas on Joseph to the left, denied. Rebound, Joseph. They kept the whistle in their pockets there because was that Louisiana that hooked that attendant on the screen initially? Backdoor, Lacombe. The idea is white. The idea was right, the execution wasn't. It was a million dollar move and a two cent finish on that play for Lacombe. And that stops clock. And Elizabeth now with his fourth foul there on what was both players kind of just being on their tippy toes. And you look here, going into the lane and Duff and Elizabeth both there to meet him at the apex. They've been protecting their house all weekend. And now it is 325 left in this ball game. Lucas Silas, can he mastermind the comeback? Rebound on Doof. Up ahead to Lacombe, he's on his bike. Drop pass, Elizabeth on four fouls. Lazier stop it and give it back over to Joseph for three. And the rebound, Elizabeth, a new 14. And a foul on a dead again. And that will be team number foul four on Queens. And his fourth personal as well. You see Cole Silas just trying to calm down the troops right now. The emotions getting the best of them here with 188 seconds to go. They've got to keep their composure. That's a hard swipe there. He just has not had a call go his way all evening. And 14 left in the shot clock, 308 left on the game clock. If they can keep this within five in the last about 90 seconds, Queen's is in a pretty good position in this game considering what a second half they've had to forget. Early February, Laval's on the ropes. They started this run on a two-game winning streak against UCAM to clinch their playoff spot, and Elizabeth caught in two minds. And this goes back over to Queens with 3.04 left. And they were one and done in the playoffs, losing to Concordia in the semifinals. And now they are 3.04 away from being the national champions of U sports. Well, the Sills brothers have been asked to do a lot in the middle of the paint there, and they've had 14 turnovers as a team now and 22 points for the Rouge Or. It was a story the first half the other way around. Look how aggressive. They're just trying to pickpocket the entire time. Sillis with it. Back out to Lucas Sillis. Doof on him. Sillis protecting, looking, waiting. Cul de sac from the center arc. Splash! And they're down by three with 2.42 left. And they're shooting 15% until that fourth main three-pointer. None bigger than that one in a one-possession game. What well, was a seven-point lead now down to three for Laval. The twist and turns of this plot line is becoming even more excruciating for these fan bases. Elizabeth, four left in the shot clock. Elizabeth. Kelvin the third rebound and a three ties it up with 2.10 left in this ballgame. And what you don't see there is Luca gets it over to Cole to exchange defensively because he knew he had foul trouble. Quick hands from Elizabeth. Safe up in the air. They'll calm it down. 12 left in the shot clock. And Luca Silas wow. gets it down to a one point lead inside two. Look at that fake there. And then a slice and dice two of them and just kisses it off the bank. We saw this on Friday night with Laval against Uvic. We saw it last night against Dow. And now, could Laval close out Queens up by one? Quick hands! And now, a chance for the lead! Tennis got it! He had a huge first half and perhaps the turning point of this game. Could Laval be the architects of their own downfall? Stay tuned here. You are watching the 2024 Green Shield U Sports Final Eight, presented by Michelob Ultra on CBC Sports.
Welcome back here. The big hitter is coming up big. And that is Aaron Tennant, who timed the trap well. And right now is heart and mouth going for Laval. They were up seven, and now they're down one with possession. Uh, jump the pass in the lane, and now they've got a two-point lead here in this fourth quarter, 13-11 advantage. But Aaron Tennant, who was the story of that first half, may be the story of this game at the end if that is one of the winning plays. He started the game for Queens, producing points, and he might have produced the point that will punch their pass forward to victory. And look at him just before that ball is inbounded, clapping, clapping, clapping. He loves the intensity, and they'll go with the double high here. They'll try and establish that high low again with Elizovich and Diff. Doof now with it. 125 left in this ball game. Margins becoming tighter now in this matchup. Joseph against Kelvin the third. Five left in the shot clock for the lead. Back heel. Rebound. Doof. New 14. Up and about up one. A 12th rebound and 26 points. He is a one man wrecking crew for this team. Tenant with it. A minute left in this ball game. We'll let the crowd take over for this moment. And it goes out of bounds. Laval ball. One point lead, 48.2 left. No time to panic if you're Queens. Right now, they can ride out the possession. And unless they hit a three, it'll still be a one possession game. If you're going to give up anything, give the inside look. Steve Joseph to put Queens to the sword. Ten left in the shot clock. Lacombe watched by dead again. Joseph in the paint. Dagger potentially. Three point lead. 26.3 left in this ball game. Queens has one last roll of the dice. And now they're on the ropes. Looking for overtime. The Moxie, the Poise, the Kahunas, you pick the words. That senior and Steve Joseph has it. 11.6 points per game. 19 here this evening. To go up against a longer, taller, lengthier player, Mikey Kelvin the third, to beat him into the paint. And then a little half step back, well being contested, may book their first championship for the Rouge Or in this program. And the issue is right now for Queens, you have to go with the quick hitter. If they give you the two, take the two and then understand who you want to put on the line as a team defensively at this point. If you have a three, take it. So they, they've got to go with the quick hitter. You don't want to waste more than, we'll call it the Mike D'Antoni rule in terms of the offense, seven seconds or less. You've got to be quick, you've got to be decisive, and do not try to do too much because it's caused havoc when they turn the ball over right in that key area. So we, we have one more twist in this tail. The question is which Silas takes it. They've got 38 combined, Luca 21, Cole 17. And here we go. Could this be the last roll of the dice for Queens? Here is Cole Silas for the tie. Reload. Joseph fouled. Tenet. 15.3 left in this ball game. And now Steve Joseph could make it a two-score lead. They got the look they want to at the end of the day. And you see the referees just talking over to Lucas Silas in terms of gamesmanship with Stevie Joseph. But they had the double screen set up right on the edge of the perimeter there. And then Cole could pick his spot. He just couldn't can it. He did it on Friday. He did it on Saturday. And he's doing it now on Sunday. One more free throw makes it a five-point lead with 15 seconds left for Queens. Five-point lead. We gotta go for a three now. Timeout called. Stephen Berry's not happy because he asked for it before the the whistle and the clock started, and he'll get it. Stay tuned here. 50.3 left. Laval 74. 
Queen, 69. As you see from the highlights here, it has been punch for punch. And now Laval might have administered the knockout blow to Queens. Well, it started in the top of the game talking about Elizabeth and Jeff. And I mean, Jeff started this part with 26 points. But listen to the noise in this building. Stevie Joseph, a big reason why, 21 points. And how can you operate in a building like this? And let's have them take you through the timeout and into this possession. I mean, Two teams that fell at the sword here in this building. It might be a third division champ here. Mike Morreale, the commissioner of the CEBL, said Quebec City is a basketball town. They had 7,000 for the All-Star game last August. And right now, it is over 3,000 here for this Laval Rougeau game. And Laval is about to be Nirvana if Queens cannot come up with five on that, without reply from Laval. It'll be a quick hitter. If they have the inside, they'll take it. And then a foul situation, we're spot on the money. Let's see, just uh, show him out towards the perimeter. Side out, Silas. It's go time now for Calvin the third. For the three. Miss, rebound, Laval. Joseph fouled by Kelly. 9.3 left in this ballgame. Steve Joseph, who was coached by Andy Herzog at Vanier College, was deemed as one of the toughest players ever to play at the fabled Vanier program. And now he's about to make himself a national champion. The free throw line, which was huge for them in their semifinal win, 85% continues to do its work, 72% on this free throw coming up. For the Bishop Gators, 1998-18, you're about to be joined by the Laval Rougiore and Concordia as well. That finished by Silas. And now it's a five point lead with five seconds left. And that's a whistle and a foul. Two more free throws here for Steve Joseph. 4.3 left. It is a long barren spell for the RSEQ. 2005 was the last time they were in the final. 98 was the last Quebec title. And now Laval will be joining Concordia and Bishops as the three Quebec champions. And a bunch of seniors here with Luca and Cole, the two main guys, and Aaron Tennant studying law there at Queens. Uh, to have a long bus ride home. A second quarter that had a 26-15 outscoring advantage. Looks like Queens had found its footing in this game. A massive second half by this team. They put their foot to the throttle and they controlled it. And it was their game and they more than defended their house. And this goes out of bounds. 3.7 left in this ball game. On the night of the Oscars, no Hollywood producer would have believed this Laval script. But Nathan Grant and his Rougiore boys have produced a box office thriller as they are your national champions for 2024. Laval, delight, despair for Queens as they lose this game. 77-71 to the Rougiore. What a game, partner. What a tournament. It's an understatement to say the least. This team got into the playoffs, as you mentioned, by skin of their teeth teeth. And Nathan Grant being hoisted up. And other players deservingly so. This team came in with 
The cards stacked against them to stay the least. They knock off the number one seed in the Victoria Vikes in the play out of the year in Diego Mafia. They knock off Malcolm Christie and the Dalhousie Tigers, who looks like a real threat. And then they get the OUA champs, and they counter punch and deliver the knockout blow and a title for this program. For Nathan Graham, when he took over in June of 2019, it was not a renovation, but a major overhaul of the composition, composition of this team. And he got what he wanted, which is the national championship. He delivered the goods to a school known for being a football power, a soccer power, and now they are a basketball national champion joining those two other programs. Well, and look at them, look at the women's program that were playing for bronze earlier today. It's a testament to the time and effort they've put in here at this university in the basketball program, whether it's at this level or the grassroots. And the hometown crowd was treated to delight. And now it begs the question is, they've had this miracle run, some will call it, and they will celebrate, but you wonder how big the reward is now versus the future payout for this program. Nathan Grant doesn't care if it's a miracle. They are your national champions. And for Queens, it's going to be a long offseason for them. They were phenomenal in the OUA, winning the OUA Wilson Cup. They were favorites to win this game. They had their moments. They were up seven. They were up. And then Laval went on the run, and they win by six. They win the second half again, 38 to 28. And at the end of the day, they hold Queens to below 18%, 17 to be exact, 4 at 23 from the land beyond. But look at the performance of Ismail Duff, Stevie Joseph, a combined 50 for the team 77. Uh, I know spring break is happening right now in Laval, but they might have to do like a full month of spring break. And what we'll have now is the uh, medal presentation for the bronze medal winners, Ottawa Gigi's, the silver medalists, Queens Gales, and now your national champions, the Laval Rougiol. How could you want to go to school tomorrow, partner? Well, I know for one thing, we're taking off tonight, tomorrow, whatever our, our travel plans are. It might take a while to get out of this arena to get to our hotel. Harris Elizabeth, he went from McGill to Laval. He bought into the plan from Nathan Grant to come to Laval knowing that they would host the Nationals and a chance to be a national champion, and he's done that. I mean, there's the celebration on the one end. You look at the other side for a player like Connor Kelly, wears his emotions on his sleeves on the other side. It's a tough pill to swallow for the OUA champs who were on the other side of a moment like this when they got a buzzer beater three to win the Wilson Cup championship. And for a dead again, you see him on the bench, towel over his head. He is heartbroken right now. Heartbroken. And and he played like a warrior today for the Gales. I mean, he's not the most peripheral score, but seven points, six rebounds. He's an enforcer to say the least. He's one of the guys this team surrounds every day and feed off his energy. And he's a catalyst for them and sets the tone defensively along with those Silas brothers. And now it is time for the presentation. Matt Antoine Garipi will take it away. Here come the Gigi's. There's a lot of congestion of bodies right now at center court that we see from our viewpoint. Yeah, I'm glad I'm up here right now versus doing the photography thing in the front row right now. Here we go, Mark Antoine Gallagher. 
Et on vient d'assister à une finale enlevante et à trois jours remplis d'émotions, d'exemples de détermination et de courage. Prenons maintenant quelques minutes pour souligner les champions de l'édition 2024 et les étudiants athlètes les plus méritants. Ladies and gentlemen, the final eight, Green Shield presented by Michelob Ultra, is coming to a close. We have just witnessed an exciting final and three days filled with emotion, examples of determination and courage. Let us now take a few minutes to recognize the champions of the 2024 edition and the most deserving student athletes. Veuillez tout d'abord accueillir sur le terrain des Human Resources and Finance Vice Rector, le Vice-Recteur aux Ressources Humaines et aux Finances à l'Université Laval, M. André Darvaux. The Vice Provost and Dean of Student Affairs at Queen's University, Ms. Anne Tierney. Le maire de la ville de Québec, le Québec City Mayor, M. Bruno Marchand. La gestionnaire aux opérations Jeux internationaux, Manager International Games Operation for U Sports, Mme Alexandra Roy. De Green Shield, directeur national grandes entreprises, M. Benoît Lavigne. Vice-président senior affaires commerciales et leader Québec, M. Steve Laberge. Le directeur des ventes chez Labatt, M. Luc Santerre. La directrice du service des activités sportives à l'Université Laval, Mme Julie Dion. Et le directeur adjoint et responsable du programme d'excellence Rouge et Or, M. Jean-Noël Corriveau. Tout d'abord, nous allons présenter les joueurs du match Nike. First of all, let's honor the Nike team players of the game for this gold medal game. Miss Tierney et Dion remettront un cadeau souvenir aux joueurs du match de la finale. Le joueur du match Nike du côté de Queens, the Nike player of the game for Queens, le numéro 8, number 8, Cole Silas. Cole Silas, uh, unfortunately, that's not the back he wants. And uh, the Et le joueur du match du côté du rouge et Life of sports, there has to be a winner and there has to be a loser. And Steve Joseph is now Doof. And Doof had a master class game for the Rouge Or. He's the heart and the soul of this team in clutch time. 26 points, 12 rebounds, and clutch 11 of 15 from the field. And I mean, look at this guy's story and where he's come from. To where he stands now. He played Division II stage up basketball for the Giants of St. John, which is about a 40 minute drive from Montreal South. And Nathan Grant got him to come to Laval. Several players have distinguished themselves over the past three days and have been named to the championship all star team. Choisi, sélectionné par Daniel Grimard de Usport, Jason Thumb et Joe Razzo from the CEBL. Each of these players will receive a souvenir presented by Madame Roy et Monsieur Darvo. L'équipe d'étoiles du 8 ultime 2024, the 2024 U Sports Men's Basketball Championship All Stars are from the Westman Winnipeg, Sean Moranen. Sean Moranin, wonderful tournament for him. Wonderful energizer, elite Ontario score. Likes. You see Rambo, Diego, or someone's going to come over to accept his award. Donald Stewart actually in the building earlier ran into him in the hallway at From the half. The Dalhousie Tigers, Malcolm Christie. You know what? The Gales, Great. the Queens, the Quebec Conference has been, always been always been looked down upon. Silas. Not anymore. <laughs> the national jam is the Quebec Conference. Sorry, say that one more time. The, the Quebec Conference has always been, always been looked down. Not anymore. Now the national champions. No, I mean, look at the level of basketball <laughs> IQ here. We saw it display tonight. <laughs> I mean, every guy here is deserving of the rewards, and especially the guys at the end here. But. It starts at the high school level, then you go to Sejap, and then you get it to this level. It's 
just the investment locally into the grassroots of basketball. It's going to continue to grow off a win like this. The marketability and a guy like this who has had such a journey and to be standing where he is now, as you see Moranin in the green tracksuit. There's Moranin as well. And for Laval, they'll become the uh, hunted for everyone in Quebec and across Canada. Voici maintenant le moment de dévoiler le joueur par excellence qui recevra le trophée Jack Donahue. And now comes the time to name the most valuable player of the tournament who will be awarded the Jack Donahue Trophy. Well, my picks for the All-Stars were all right. Pretty good. Not bad. Et le joueur par excellence du tournoi, du rouge et le numéro 11, Ismaël Diouf. Like, look at the emotion he wears. Every every time he gets another accolade, it's like he's not expecting this kind of celebration, this kind of attention. But again, he, he's he's been he's a shot blocker, he's a paint protector. He's shifty when he has the ball in his hands. He can stretch the floor with the three ball, and the deserving MVP of the tournament. He might not have to eat another meal. That he's going to pay for. Might be in the house for the next while here in Laval. I mean, it's going to be hard to walk around campus for this young man, <laughs> to say the least. Procedons maintenant à la remise des médailles aux trois équipes les plus méritantes du championnat. We'll now proceed to the presentation of medals for this championship. Please welcome Mr. Marchand and Corriveau. Veuillez accueillir Mr. Marchand and Corriveau qui vont présenter les médailles de bronze. Who will present the bronze medals? Coming into this tournament, there are to three the OUA University teams. University of Ottawa, GGs. Oh, GGs, the University of Ottawa. Two have come up with medals, but not the color of desire. But you still leave with the medal around your neck, which is the most important thing at the end of the day to build a program for the future. I mean, to build a program, but also look into the future for a lot of these young men where for a lot of these guys, whether it's this year, two, three, four years down the road, this will be the end of their basketball careers for those who don't get and the now, second opportunity. And to have that in your home somewhere the hanging the for the rest of your life is special. The Might the be bitter at the moment, but it's a lasting memory. And the best photo in team sports is that championship photo with the trophy. You see they're already doing it with the MVP award on the side here. And as much as there was hiccups for Laval in the first half, the backroom staff came through. Baba Yao came in the fourth quarter. Multiple steals, multiple rebounds, clutch points that gave Laval the belief they could win this game. And he did. Well, don't forget about Wembe, too, who just, just in that third quarter provided a, a switch of pace, a little more energy in the building. And he had five points. He said, yeah, oh, he had four and three rebounds. So there's little contributions like that hey, that just no, add up over the course of a game. After Wembe missed four free throws. grand champion, le rouge et de l'Université Laval. Silver medal is being presented to Queens, and now Laval will get their gold. It is a priceless currency for the Laval Rougeur. And you just see the emotion on the flip side there. Not a lot of the camera work being done on, on the uh, runners up of this tournament, but you just see even when it, how much it settles on them once they have that silver around their golden jerseys. It is. It is, it is one of those surreal moments right now for Laval fans. They are in dreamland because 40, a little less than 40 days ago, they were on the ropes of not making their own playoff tournament. And they did because that UCAM back-to-back -back wins kick-started their campaign. And Nathan Gatt never relented. I saw him for the last four or five weeks. He, he said, look, we were banged up in the first semester of games. We came back. We knew what we had to do. We were competitive in games. And now it's been worth it for him to win this Quebec, uh, this national title. 
Well, it's sweet to say the least. And I mean, knowing that you're in the tournament, no matter what happened, whether they made the playoffs or not, was a whole nother thing. But just knowing at the beginning of your year, you're playing for this weekend. So like you said, the injuries, despite having them, they healed up on time. Their brand of basketball came through. And then we had a couple of stars emerge for the Rouge or over the course of this weekend. You see Steve Joseph very humbly, just behind his guys, waiting for everyone to get their, their medals. And for Queens, uh, nothing but class acts. They have in Ottawa, phenomenal basketball programs in the OUA. They gave their best punch at this Nationals. And unfortunately, this came up a little bit short on trying to win that gold medal. What a story for Nathan Grant, though. Just be able to turn this program around it speaks volumes about what he's done in a short amount of time here at the helm at Laval. Now it's just that last thing. They all want it to raise that trophy at the end. They've gotten those medals. And the last step is just a couple seconds away for the champions and the captains of this team. Uh, they're going to do multiple team photos right now, as you see right Mesdames et messieurs, les champions de l'édition 2024 du 8 ultime Green Shield, présenté par Michelob Ultra, le rouge et or de l'Université Laval. Who's going to grab it is the better question. I think everyone's going to grab it. Gets their hands on it first to lift it. Look home. Laval is now a basketball school. The celebration music plays here. There's the party from the start right till the end. Queens will have some discussions here on the side about what could have, would have, should have been for this team. But the team that got hot at the right time won this tournament. And they, now the greatest photo in team sports. And you're right. Injury-wise, team basketball-wise, they invested in each other. No one cried or saw it when they were down in games. The body language always positive. They pulled each other through. And that was a consistent theme we saw, making plays for one another at both ends of the court. Unselfish basketball. And there you go, they're gonna do the net, net, net cutting, I beg, beg your pardon, net cutting coming up, and that trophy is gonna be hanging out in Laval for a while, man. I mean, you say the best photo in sports is the championship one. As a photographer, I'd also argue when you get that uh, above the net camera shot of someone cutting it down, it's a pretty good luck, it's especially a, for the winning shot. head coach who uh, gets the last cut. Nathan Grant, there he is, him and his son. His lovely wife and daughter as well, and now coming into the picture. And then Nathan Grant, he grew up in, in a tough part of Montreal. And he persevered through, went to Vanier College as well, ran a university, went through the ranks of the coaching hierarchy, and now he's a national champion. On a young coach at that too, so something he can build off in the future, especially from a recruiting standpoint here in the province. A couple of Brandon Bobcat uh, alumni that were coaching throughout the weekend as well. Speaks to a testament of the basketball IQ guys. Basketball IQ of the guys who pass through these programs. Final thoughts here before we wrap it up. <laughs> Amazement. Not, not the storyline you would have predicted coming into it. Yeah. Knock off three conference champions at home. I mean, it's just joy is the other word to see that level of basketball being played consistently on all three days of competition what an amazing conclusion to the 2024 u sports men's basketball season as laval Rougier win their first ever u sports title and we're thankful that you've been along for the experience with us here on cbc sports before we sign off 
we would like to take the opportunity to thank people who have worked hard to bring you these broadcasts as well as the coverage of all rugby season long basketball you name the sport they've done it all behind the scenes that no one knows about the executive producer of U Sports on CBC is John Bauer. The U Sports graphic coordinator is Aaron McPherson. Broadcast production assistant, Molly Cohn. Video producer, Usman Omar and Sarah Said. Stats, John Edwards. Traffic, Tyler Mulligan. Our U Sports on CBC stream partner is ISI. Live including Matt Copeland, Vice President, Network Operations Support and CEO, Bynet Nethery. Local production provided by Production Axis. The director of the U Sports Men's Final League Championship on CBC has been produced by Jean-Francois Bouchard. Audio and graphics by Danielle Boudreau-Gay. And many thanks to everyone who worked behind the scenes that no one knows about. They put us on camera. They made us look like 8K. And Greg, we had an amazing time this weekend calling three days of exciting basketball. And now it has to UBC next year for men's and women's. And that's the most exciting part is now it's all in one location. So double the joy, double the fun, double the heartbreak, double the celebration of the game of basketball here in Canada. As invented, remember, by a Canadian at the end of the day. Let's try to do it again next year, my friend. On behalf of the staff and crew here, wish you a great offseason. Congratulations, Laval Rougiard, your first ever national title. We'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. It's that moment again. The one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite. Of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais. Quand toutes les chances sont contre toi. When you can't push one more second. Chase the glory. Viseo.